The Canadian memorial at Stokes Bay was unveiled by the Prime Minister of Canada and reads, to commemorate the embarkation of Canadian troops from these Gosport shores for Normandy on the 50th anniversary of D-Day. In preparation for D-Day, the beach at Stokes Bay was used as a construction site making caissons as a breakwater for the Mulberry Harbours. But as D-Day grew closer, there was also a need for embarkation hards so that bottlenecks did not occur at major ports, as it was imperative that the beachheads could be resupplied faster than the enemy reinforced their defences. For example, on June the 6th, there were 10 Royal Canadian Navy flotillas, each with three LCIs, landing craft infantries, which landed 4,600 men. The final plan for the embarkation hards designated G1 to G4 included the whole of Stokes Bay. Each hard consisted of a concrete approach which led to a sloping mat of flexible concrete blocks laid onto the beach nicknamed chocolate blocks. These were cast on the beach itself using concrete sand and shingle creating embarkation hards that allowed for lorries and armoured vehicles to embark onto landing craft without getting bogged down. The hards also included a concrete landing ramp equipped with three steel frame mooring points known as dolphins to guide landing craft during loading and unloading. The embarkation hards needed approach roads to accommodate the concentrated heavy traffic and transit areas for marshalling troops, vehicles and equipment. For example, the original part of Jellicoe Avenue which had been laid out before the war started, was knocked through into Stokes Bay Military Road, which became the southern part of Jellicoe Avenue. The whole of Western Way and Jellicoe Avenue were designated as transit areas for the Stokes Bay Embarkation Hards. The 3rd Canadian Infantry Division left from Stokes Bay, including the North Nova Scotia Highlanders, who were involved in confusion concerning an iconic photo of D-Day taken by Royal Canadian Navy Lieutenant Gilbert Milne, misidentified in books and magazines as either the North Nova Scotia Highlanders or the Highland Light Infantry of Canada, and an oil painting in the City Hall of Bernier-sur-Mer identified the soldiers from the Regiment de la Chaudière. However, LCI-299 featured in the photo embarked at Southampton, not Stokes Bay, and it was crucial that the historical record be corrected, said Honorary Colonel Shearing of the Stormont, Dundas and Glengarry Highlanders. Let there be no doubt they were the Glens. Yet the connection with Stokes Bay remains as strong as ever because the action involved AVREs, from the Royal Engineers, also seen in the picture, which crucially created the opening in the sea defences which allowed the troops to fight their way off Juno Beach. Without the AVREs, Canadian casualties would have been much greater, and recently discovered film from the Imperial War Museum shows the armoured vehicles loading at Stokes Bay prior to D-Day. After the war, Stokes Bay was handed back to Gosport Borough Council. Most of the equipment had been removed, including the huts, tanks, shelters and storage facilities. The approach roads and concrete mats to the hards were left. Gosport Council converted the ones at G1 and G2 to car parks. Areas of concrete for hards, G3 and G4, still remain alongside the promenade. Some of the flexible concrete matting can still be seen at all four hards when the tide and storms exposed.